Well, we're almost done. Three-fourths of the way through. Just one more trip around the well. I will go slowly this time to make up for me not even traveling here last time. Well, there's only one puzzle to choose from right here, so let's use the only one we haven't done yet. The one that looks like... Dinner. stops over there. But that bracelet just got a lot brighter than it was earlier. Okay. Hammer. Oh, he's naming them. Comb. Um, and they went away. It just sucks because my hair is all over the place. I don't want to lose the ball, I think. To identify these items, there is no need, for I will do so if you ask. Dagger. Oh my gosh, you are actually being helpful. To prove six pairings in this hall of hidden links is the challenge behind this task. And then you go right back to saying nothing at all. Table. A table goes with a sickle, of course. Bracelet, you want to brush the bracelet. Right, that makes sense. All right. Um, statue, clearly the statue goes in the bowl. And the dagger, or the chisel, no. Yeah, you want to hide your weapons in the chest. Dagger. Quern. Uh, the hell's a quern? You have no more moves you may take. Is that it? You're not going to tell me if I even got one right or two? You just tell me it's not right? Oh. This puzzle doesn't give us any indication if we've made any pairings properly, unless we've made every pairing properly. Not very forgiving, is it? So how many pairings in total can we make? And once we've made a pairing, how many more can we make from there? I've decided to subdivide this problem into two parts. One, find out the number of possibilities, number of um, combinations available for any stage of the puzzle if you, if you were to assume that you already made a certain number of pairings that were correct. For example, in the beginning of the puzzle, there are six pairings to make and you don't know what any of them are, so you have this many possible combinations of solutions. If you knew one pairing, 100%, then you would only need to find five more of them, and then there'd be a less, a smaller amount of possibilities from there, and so on and so forth. And from there, try to decide a nice number where we can say, okay, we need to know for sure this many pairings, or try to pick some pairings that we are sure, or very sure, that are correct, and then keep them like that, and then maybe brute force or, or knock our, our, our way around um, all the other pairings. And that will become a little bit more clear towards the end. But right now, let's find out how many possible combinations there are. There are 12 objects with six pairings each. Since I'm going to be using algebra stuff, I'm going to be using the f of n stuff that you either learned in school or you forgot in school. F of n, in this case, is going to represent the number of distinct pairings of n objects. So in this f of 12 would be this puzzle. And the constraints on n would be n has to be even, because you can't make a pairing with 11. You're going to have one all out. And if you have 12 and you make a pairing, now you have 10. Make a pairing, now you have 8. It just goes down like that. And n is never going to equal 0 if you can't make a pairing with no objects. Once you've made a pairing with two objects, you're done. So let's start at the, uh, the most simplest. 
what if we only had two objects? There's only one pairing we can make. It's kind of, that's pretty obvious. Now, what if we have the next n from there? What if we have four objects? Well, let's, since we have a small number of objects, let's do this kind of ad hoc. Ball goes with chisel, if ball goes with chisel, quorum and brace will have to go together. Ball goes with quorum, if ball goes with quorum, then chisel and brace will have to go together. Or ball goes with brace and then chisel and quorum have to go together. So that's three unique pairings. It sounded like there might have been six, because I said ball, chisel, quorum, brace, but ball, chisel going together and quorum, brace going together are part of one combination um, because they're not, they're, they're part of the same solutions that are part of the same combination, even though they're two different pairings. Um, for, so, bowl, corn, and chisel bracelet is one combination. Bowl, chisel, corn, bracelet is another combination. So, there are three um, combinations from there. And I'm using the word combination probably incorrectly. I hope, at least ad hocly, um, I'm being understood right now. So, we can say that there's three solution, three combinations if we have four objects. That's pretty small. What if we had six objects or we had to make three pairings? Well, one, three, it looks like I want to put a five here, but <laughs> that's not right. Let's move this away, go down here, and then we'll pretend that we have these objects remaining. If I pair bowl with chisel, then I have these four. But we already know how many combinations are available in a group of four. So, bowl with chisel, then we have a group of four. Bowl with corn, another group of four. Bowl with bracelet, another group of four. Bowl with comb, another group of four. Bowl with sickle, another group of four. That sounds like multiplication to me. So we have five pairings we can make with the, the that would be like the first thing we can do. Bowl with something or something with something else some object with some other object. There are six objects, but that object has to go with one of the other objects, so there are basically five possibilities from there. So basically six minus one. And then multiply by however many possibilities are there once you have four objects remaining. So that's recursion. We can't see it here, but this actually obeys the same rules. Uh, f of 6 is equal to 5 times f of 4. f of 4 is equal to 3 times f of 2, because f of 2 is 1 and 3 times 1 is still 3. So that still holds. We can generalize this to n and say that, okay, this number is 1 minus n, which Which makes sense, because if we have n objects, there's n minus 1 to choose. If, if we have n objects and we pick one, then there's n minus 1 to choose, because you cannot pair it with itself. And then that's multiplied by however many possibilities there were for the number of objects before. And the number of objects before, if we do some algebra here and say f of n minus 2, plug n minus 2 into there, there's n minus 2 minus 1. Um, that would be n minus 3, and then the um, plug n minus 2 there, that would be times n minus 2 minus 2, which is n minus 4, and then if we uh, plug f, so we just basically solve for f of n minus 2, and then we plug it back up there. There is a reason I'm doing this. f of n minus 2 is equal to n minus 3 times f of n minus 4, and f of n minus 4 is going to have an n minus 5 term in it. So n minus 1 times n minus 3 times something that's going to have an n minus 5, and so on and so forth, until finally you get to f of 2, which is equal to 1. So what you have is, in a sense, the um, if we decide to go to 12, then, f, then you're going to have an 11 multiplied by 9 multiplied by... I think you can kind of see a pattern here, 7, 5, 3, and 1. And that 
working backwards to make that recurs that recursive relationship, and then plug and then plugging in the value we know, we can create a multiplication series that says if we multiply all that out, it tells us how many there are, and in fact, the actual answer to that is. Oh, that's a lot. That's a, that's a lot. That's a lot. That's a pretty big amount. Of course, you can go further from this. Um, for example, first we'll have to get rid of the constraints so that we have um, n can be any number. So instead of n representing the number of objects, n will represent the number of pairings. So we can do that by having the multiplication from i equals 1 to n of 2i minus 1, which basically means that 2i minus 1 will make sure that every value um, that n can take and every subsequent value will work out to be an odd number, which allows us to do some funny math stuff. If we expand that out, then we have 1 times 3 times 5 times a bunch of stuff to 2n minus 1, but we can't really do much with a bunch of series of odd numbers, but we can do a lot with a series of all the numbers. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. So how do we add those multiplications in? We go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, but we're also going to divide by all of the multiplications of all the even numbers. As you can see, the even numbers would cancel out with their counterparts above, and you would end up with the same thing. And then you could say that the top of it is just simply a factorial of 2n, which it is, because you have 2n times 2n minus 1 times 2n minus 2, so you have 2n factorial. And then for the bottom, you'll have all the even numbers, 2 times 4 times 6 times all the way up. We're going to have to turn that into a series of 1 times 2 times 3 times 4 times 5 somehow in order to be able to use the same factorial. So in order to do that, we pull out um, the factor of 2. Now remember, because we're using multiplication, not addition, as you can see here, if we pull out 2 from these additions, that works. 2 times 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus 4 works because it distributes. They're both equal to 20. But if we are pulling out for multiplication, that's not going to be the same thing. We have to pull two out number of times there are terms there, so it would be 2 to the power of 4. So here, when we pull out from the actual equation we are working with, it would be pulling out 2 to the power of n. Then you'd be multiplying that by 1 times 2 times 3 times 4 times 5 all the way up to n, and then that can be turned into a factorial of n factorial. Then you have this final equation. And then what you can do is, once you have this final equation, that you can then solve for what the value is by substituting n. And in this case, it's going to be 6 not 12, because we already said earlier that we're defining the equation in terms of pairs, not objects, so that we can use all values of n without having to restrict the values of uh, n to be even. And then from there, we plug in 6, and then we can multiply that out, so this will be, in fact, this will be this factorial over this factorial. And this is kind of difficult to work with, so let's do um, 12 factorial times 12 equals 12 factorial is 12 times 11 times 10 times 9 times 8 times 7 times 6 factorial. Cross out the 6 factorials from both the top and the bottom, and then we just multiply this out, back this out, and then try to do some substitutions here and there. Well, not substitutions, but canceling stuff out here and there to make it very easy to work with. And then we finally reach a final uh, multiplication and division solution, which we then plug into the calculator in order to find out the final answer, which is 10,395. There's such a thing as going too far, which is why what I just did was done very quickly and without much explanation. Yeah, this can be represented as basically the multiplication of all odd numbers, and using this allows you to um, remove that constraint up there um, so that uh, this value is always an odd number no matter what value of n you have, so n represents the number of multiplications or pairings as opposed to the number of objects, and then you do some creative work there, and then you end up with an equation where you can just plug in n and get an answer, but what would you rather do? Would you rather do, okay, I have 12 objects, so it's 11 times 9 times 7 times 5, etc., or would you rather do this? Maybe in some circumstances this would be better, but this is just nicer, and this is what professors want, but this is what humans like. So screw this. Just saw it off, you fucking... Anyway, and then focus on just this. And from here, I'm going to make a nice pretty graph of all the numbers of combinations 
or f of 12, f of 10, f of 8, f of 6, and then find out where a good place to stop would be. So here are the results. I could have used a computer program to generate the graph, but I'm not going to. Anyway, first look at the table. At the very beginning of the puzzle, when we have 12 objects to pair, we haven't made any pairings yet. There are 10,395 possible combinations for this puzzle, and only one of them is correct, I think. I'm pretty sure only one of them is correct. And for if we know one pairing for sure, then there's um, 945 remaining possible combinations. I think this graph really exemplifies it. Factorials explode. They really do. These guys are all stuck down here in the bottom. And all this space is used just so I can put that guy up there. Because logarithmic graphs don't really show you just how much of a difference there is. Just look at this. You, one pair and these are the, 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 a lot of pod, the, 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 <laughs> See what I'm saying? And that's what I mean. A lot of possibilities are gone. And with two pair, there's only 105 remaining. 105 I can handle. 105 brute forces is annoying, but it's not insane. 15 would be ideal. So we can really cut down the number of possibilities if we can just be sure of just one or two, two preferably at least, pairings. How can we know for sure at least two pairings? We can't. But we can make some educating guesses. When I was younger, I paired the sickle and the corn for one reason. I didn't bloody recognize them. They were the most foreign objects to me. Uh, and I didn't know what the puzzle was, and still to this day it's kind of difficult. What's the puzzle asking? Is it asking you to pair based on form, based on function, based on form in that particular room, based on the function you know versus what it looks like the function they are, for example, hammer for pounding nails, um, or this particular hammer, the way it's shaped, is it for something else? What, like, like drums or something? <laughs> but um, it's very difficult. But it turns out, when I was younger, and I decided to pair the corn with the sickle, achievements and ignorance, I was correct. And if I was a designer for the puzzle, I would, I would have picked two very foreign objects to kind of confuse people. But it turns out that by being kind of a little bit more foreign than the others, they end up more obviously going together. So what exactly is a corn and sickle anyway? According to the Book of Webster, page 257, Verse 4, a sickle is an instrument for cutting grain used with one hand, or possibly two if you're not that strong, and a corn, according to the same book of Webster, page 227, verse 23, a stone hand mill for grinding grain. Stone hand mill for grinding grain, instrument for cutting grain. Grain, 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 they go together. So, I would say that the bloody corn and the sickle go together, and there's our first pairing that cuts it down. Are there any more obvious pairings here? The other one that came to my mind, and just once again it turned out to be correct, if you made a decision and it was wrong, let's not think about that, where it was the dagger and the chisel. At first I was like, hammer and chisel makes sense, but dagger and chisel were both sharp. So there was kind of, of an odd question, but seemed to make, it seemed to make the most sense. I mean, the other things that might have been obvious would be the bowl and the chest, because they're both containers. Um, or, but then again, the bowl and the bracelet were both round, if you wanted to go that far. Um, table and chest are both furniture, but then a statue tends to go on a table, or a statue can be created from a chisel. It, it, you can kind of come with a pairing for anything, but the 
but Dagger and Chisel just, just scream out. They look the same in the room. They are both sharp, presumably. And yeah, so based on that, I'm going to go with those combinations. And that would reduce our number of possibilities to 105. But we still have a bunch of pairings to make, and we're probably going to get some things wrong. So let's go and try some stuff out now. All right, so our immutables, corn, sickle, dagger, chisel. Hmm. From the remaining ones, I'm going to hit comb with bracelet because they're both vanity items. On a table, or you can smash it with a hammer. The brush can paint a statue. Well, I guess it makes sense. Bowl can go on a table, but the bowl is also a container, like a chest is, only it's a much smaller container. I've never eaten cereal out of a chest before. And a hammer can be used to build a table. You have no more moves you may take. Well, fuck you too. All right, try again. Brush, sorry, comb, bracelet. <sighs> I really feel the bowl and chest go together, but the statue can go on a table as a display. The bowl would then make most sense with the chest, but then the hammer and the brush would go together. They look similar. They have a wooden handle with something attached to it. They don't really function the same. I don't think this is right. How? Right, okay. Because last time I painted, what I did was I took a hammer, I smashed it into the uh, acrylics, and then I smashed it into the canvas. The result was abstract art, otherwise known as it's going to make me a lot of money. Spoiler alert, it didn't. Spoiler alert, I never actually painted. Spoiler alert, I don't even own a hammer. At least not one that looks like that. That puzzle really comes down to luck. For all the math we did earlier, it doesn't, at the best, the best of times, it can give you a bit of a sense of security or a sense of not feeling like you're gonna lose horribly um, if you really are sure you got the pairings correctly. But if we made a mistake in the beginning, we'd be screwed forever. That puzzle comes down to luck and hoping you have the same imagination as a designer. The tasks resolved so far marked here are 19. Thanks for watching. Wait. What? Oh my gosh. The, the, there's a, the, the other one. The, the other one. There's another one. Right, 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 right. Remember the other, there's another stone. One with a triangle. Faster. Faster. I want to see what's going on. Remember, there was another stone in all these sets that looks like a triangle that we never pressed. It just lit up. Can we finally press it? Oh my gosh, we can! The House of Tantrum have you come upon? were those who administer equal parts and manage fair and true to complement and recognize the needs of one and all. Six sides, six streets, six houses meet as one, but only in their union planned with all. No single house or parag guides our hands, 
the strength and wealth of sharing merits all. Three-fourths of the way through the game, I forgot to mention. This game has story to it. 